All right, how are you doing today? So we're going to talk a little bit more about oil painting. And uh, what I've got down here is I've got a, this is a value scale. And with the value scale, we, it's how we analyze the values of colors. And with the value scale, we have 10 steps on your value scale. And we have 10 is white going down to one that is black. Now, sometimes you'll see, this is the more, the more common where you have 10 is, is white and one is black. Uh, when I was trained, it was the reverse. So you had one was white and 10 was black. But, so you might see that and it's just, this, it's become more common to have the, the reverse where 10 is white and it gets darker as it goes, as the numbers go down to black being one. And so whenever, we're, whenever you're painting, you're always trying to see what the colors are along this value scale. And we have 10 steps because most people can't perceive more than 15 steps of value. Once you get to 18, most people can't really distinguish a difference. And even most artists can't see past 22 steps of value that have had their eyes highly trained. So we go ahead and we simplify it into this 10 steps. If I have a painting that has these 10 steps of value, the painting will look like it has a full range of values. And in art, we're always simplifying. We don't need it to be harder. We, all, we want it to be simpler. Simpler is gonna be easier. And this is our simplification of values. Now I have black and white here because I wanna show you that whenever we're going to do a painting, we'll mix and we'll mix some some value steps to get as a, as a convenience so that we don't have to mix as much and so we'll normally mix a a medium gray and a light gray and a dark gray so if i'm going to mix a medium gray and i know that my black is has a stronger tinting strength than my white and for those that saw my demonstration uh or have watched that about the tinting strength of paint understand that this ivory black if i take uh, this is uh, an M. Graham paint, uh, and I and there are like a hundred different shades, and you're gonna have variations between manufacturers. So, if I have Gamblin, for instance, it's five times the uh, tinting strength of my white, as opposed to M. Graham, that's four times. And if I have Grumbacher, it's three times the tinting strength of my white. And so, that's why artists usually will stay with a certain paint every time, so they don't have to deal with those variations but again like we talked about if to help us along so we don't have as much trouble if i'm mixing a light value i'm going to start with white and i'm add just gonna i'm gonna add just what well, that's probably too much little bits that's just a scraping of black a little bit of black to it so that it doesn't get too dark wow look at that so that that went a little darker than what i was hoping for so if that happens well here's what you're going to do no big thing the biggest problem is when people start slapping paint together and start hoping they get the color they're gonna want or the value, it never works. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this over here and I'm gonna start a new mixing puddle with white. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of this and mix that into here, because this has already been cut down with a lot of white. And now I can get it very, you know, very easily make it the exact sort of value that I want, which is a light gray, you know, that's supposed to be kind of halfway between this and white, which is about right there. And so I always mix up three puddles of grays, light gray, medium gray, and we're gonna do a dark gray. So if we're doing a dark gray, we're gonna start with, you know, black. And then we're gonna add, whoops, that's way too much white. Um, start off with just a little bit like that. It's uh, harder to take the white out. We can always add white, more white to it. So, all right, so good. We can actually add more because of the higher tinting strength of this color. And we want to get a value this between the, this medium gray and this black, which it's not there yet. So we're gonna add more white. And add more still. So again, the black has a higher tinting strength. So we can add more white. We're gonna to have to add more white to it to get it lighter. All right. But again, we're, we're having more control by adding white to our black instead of just slapping stuff together and hoping that it gets to where we want it to be. That just doesn't happen. If you're playing the piano, you don't close your eyes and just hope that you're going to get the right hit the right note. Um, and I know you can say, well, I know an exercise where people will do that to be more intuitive and what have you, and that's probably a good thing. But 
we need to we need to be kind of aware of how we're going to more successfully reach the, the the place we're looking for the value that we want the color that we want and this is the way to do it so again I've added enough white and I think that we're now between these two might might be able to stand to be just a tiny bit okay maybe a little bit more all right there we go so this is now the value that I want and so whenever I paint I always use these three because if I want the value in between here and here well then I can just take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and very quickly get the 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 value that's between those two and if I want the value between this to that again I can take this and this now usually I'm gonna if I'm trying to go in between here I'm gonna use the lighter color and add the darker to it and it's the reverse with this I wanted the you know the darker and add the add the lighter to it but anyways I can very easily mix up the value between these two values right there and of course I can mix between here to here and I can mix between there and there and I'm all and by doing that you're gonna end up with a you know a grayscale and again whoops that's didn't have enough white so put that over there grab more white <laughs> and the white brought some more black with it that's not gonna work so we're gonna grab a little more white here voila more white I'm gonna try this again we're gonna give us to grab some of this white and we're gonna add it in here and again this is there we go so I got my light values going down through my darker light value, darker light value, just above middle value, middle value, between middle value and my dark value. And if I wanted between these two, again, I could take this and my black, and I could mix that little bit of white, change my mixture, but that's all right. I can add more black to it. Easier to darken a color than it is to lighten a color of the two. So again, now we've got you know all these different values that we could put along here uh, our value scale and so we'd have black as our that's black so that's our our one and then we've got this it's just light just slightly lighter right and then we've got this right here that's a little lighter still and then we've got this right here and you know this right there so again we're gonna have this value scale these different values getting lighter and lighter and lighter going up the going up the value scale like so and so again if we have all these on here it's gonna look like a full range of value Okay, from, from black all the way to white. So by mixing by mixing up my my three puddles, again it makes it much easier to get a full range, a full value scale very quickly. I have to do less mixing. So that's my white. So we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All the way to black. So again, whenever whenever I whenever I'm painting, I always have again these these puddles, and I always have black and white out too. I always have these puddles of a. Oh, it's usually my gray is probably a little bit closer to this. There we go. I usually have these three uh, three grays that I use, or we just have a light gray, a medium gray, and a dark gray, and then I can mix with white and black and in between the puddles to get all the in-between stuff. All right, and you really want to know your value scale. The most important thing when you paint a color is to be able to look at the color and ask yourself, where does the color sit along this value scale? So again, by mixing up these three puddles, which we'll do anytime that we do a painting in black and white, 
instead of mixing up all 10, and there's some people that will have you do that, uh, we're gonna save a little bit of time by only mixing three. But by mixing the three, we're gonna save us, ourselves a lot of time mixing in between there. So give this, a, go ahead and give this a try. Use this in your painting. Uh, we're gonna be doing some, some painting in the black and white where we're gonna have the three puddles mixed up. Uh, even when I do full, full color paintings, again, I'll always have three puddles of my, my light ivory black, my medium ivory black, and my dark ivory black that I've mixed. And I also do that with my burnt umber too. So I have six puddles. I'll have a light brown, a medium brown, and a dark brown, and a, a light black, a medium black, and a dark black. And that really helps, again, to save time with your mixing. And it gives you a, bit, a greater value range, which makes your paintings look more realistic because they're, they have, again, that full spectrum. They have this full spectrum of value like is in the world around us. This has been Kevin McCain. I hope that you, again, try to use this in your painting and that you get more creative and enjoy you know, painting more by being able to understand the value scale and how to use these mixtures to very quickly get a full range of values. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Keep painting.